Hey, Chris Lipe here with the isolated vocals for No One Knows, Queens of the Stone Age, Josh Homme. Great song, great vocals. There's a lot going on here subtly in the production. The neat sort of gang background vocals, the doubling, but then also his performance, his delivery is really unique. The way he blends his head resonance with his chest resonance, the way that he kind of moans. <laughs> we'll study that as well. This is a really interesting study. If you'd like help with your own singing and you'd like me to come alongside you as your vocal coach, click the link below and join my free voice course. That's the best place to start. And there's lots of ways that we can work together from there. Also, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel and turn those notifications on Let's get started. We get some rules to follow That end this, these and those Now, I think this is really fun to hear. I don't know if this is an artifact of the isolated vocals that I got or if they comped this in a way and, and just kind of overlooked the crossfades. These and on those, and then here there's a consonant break. Those. those. <laughs> it's fun to hear those little Easter eggs in these isolated vocals. Again, might be artifact, but it sounds like it was just, they just kind of left it. Love it. No one knows. All right, let's talk about his tone a little bit here. No one knows. Not really. It's moanier than that. And we can get there by employing subtle compression, holding back air, and adjusting freely the placement of our voice box, our larynx. No, 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 no. Make sure we still get our face out of the way and show our teeth but it's totally fine to adjust your larynx to get a certain length of tone. Don't let anybody tell you your larynx must be fixed, that it can't be high or that it can't be low. The main thing is, are you singing without tension and are you getting the sounds you want to get without exhausting yourself? But let's talk a little bit more about compression. No, no, if I hold back air, not to the point of grit. So I'm holding back air and I'm pushing with my support, my downward support. No, 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 no one knows. That sounds a little closer to what he's doing. And if we bring in some of these other lines. These and those. These and those. Keep the larynx low. I like to put kind of a concerned look on my face because it helps bring the muscles into the way they need to be. But even if we go back to these lines here, we get some rules, rules to follow. We, 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 not we, we. There's this aspect going on. He's very much singing like this. And we best not miss it because Oftentimes, we get to the point that, oh, that's just the way he sounds. Well, there may be some genetic aspects that cause people to sound. No, not maybe. There definitely are. But if we stop there, then we rob ourselves of the opportunity to learn and put some of these things in our own voice. It's easy to get filled with tension when we're using compression. <laughs> We want to make sure we stay relaxed, even though we're holding back air with the area above our voice box, the false chord area. We've got some exaggerated a lot and then back it off. That will help you do it tension free. I've done lots of videos on compression. We've got some rules to follow and then back it off. No, no one knows. No. No, 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 no one knows some rules to follow. Moving 
on. We'll observe this more in a little while. No one knows. We get these pills to swallow. Swallow. Not swallow. Swallow. Closes that vowel, leans into the compression. But there's this other really neat thing happening here. We get these pills to swallow. Pills. This isn't your ordinary whisper. We get these pills. No. We get these. He's doing a compressed whisper, or what I've called in past videos, stage whisper. Pills, pills. Where we. <laughs> Marilyn Manson does this a lot. But he's employing the same sort of technique. Pills, pills. We get these. We get these. Where I'm holding back air. I'm disengaging my primary vocal cords. And it creates this very loud whisper. This loud, aggressive whisper. This is the way it gets so in your face, even though it's sort of panned over. And he's sticking with the rhythm with his primary voice very well. We get these pills. To swallow. It's, it, there's reverb on it. Pills. And then he, he lengthens that S. Super cool. How they stick in your throat. Notice the, uh, the, the D, the throat. Throat. <laughs> Tastes like gold. Oh, oh. I like how he shapes his vowels. That's a diction thing. Um, it's, he's probably not thinking about it. But if we put that in our minds and think about it uh, as we sing, I am old. Yes, I am old. Oh, oh, oh. Another thing that we can experiment diction wise with. Variety. It's like learning licks on a guitar, vocal licks. Things with diction, things with pronunciation are fair game as well. Oh, what you do to me? No one knows. Again, that loud whisper. The other thing that he does quite a bit, uh, and I, I love this kind of sound. Do to me. Me. Me, do to me. Modify those vowels. It creates this extra level of expression, especially with the amount of compression that he's using on his voice. Creating those vowel mods mid phrase really opens up the sound of a lot of lines and it creates this texture that isn't necessarily, it's not there the whole time. And so, it makes you feel like his voice is more diverse even than it really is, simply because he's expressing by creating those vowel mods. And I realize you're mine. Indeed a fool am I. And I realize you're mine. Now, there's actually three things going on here. One of them is very, very quiet. I'll give you a clue as to what it is. But the doubling, the way that he's doubling, the way that he's performing these are key in making this sound what it is. And you really don't hear it until you listen to the isolated vocals. First of all, we've got this sort of lazy, and I still compressed, and I realize you're mine. Oh, mine. That moany compressed sound. And we go up into head voice in a very consistent way between the tracks. Notice how, how locked his vibrato is there. But the rest of the time, you hear that pitch variance that happens with a true double. He's just very locked in on his vibrato. That's part of this sound. And I realize you're mine. Then we've got the in the background. And I realize you're mine. In 
indeed a fool am I And I realize you're mine Indeed a fool am I And I realize you're mine Indeed a fool am I Indeed a fool am I I realize you're mine Indeed a fool am I These aspects blended together to taste And that whispers way, way down Plus the way that he is locked into his vibrato on both of those, on all of those lines, but the ends of the lines, there's a lot of variance, even in the way he approaches his vibrato at the end of these lines. You know, he's going down some and, and holding him out a little bit differently, but let's mix this together a little bit and you'll be able to hear why this works. So we're going to bring <laughs> the whispers way down. And I realize you're mine Indeed a fool am I And I realize you're mine I'm also going to pan it over just a little bit And I'm going to pan the double over just a little bit Bring it off center just a hair And bring it down Bring the double down as well as the whispers. And I realize you're mine. Indeed a fool am I. And I realize you're mine. Indeed a fool am I. I The point is to do not to do exactly what he did, but to realize that the that sheen that's happening is. I mean, some of it is preamp overdrive, but if you get rid of this whisper, and I have it a little louder even than they do, but indeed a fool am I. It's so subtle, but such an awesome tool. And it's cool that they've exaggerated it in certain areas uh, and then left it really, really subtle back here. So, neat. Listening on. I journey through the desert of the mind with no hope. With no hope. <laughs> So these neat background vocals here they exist uh, largely throughout the rest of the track. The oh, oh, oh. Listen carefully. I journey through the desert. We have oh, oh, oh. and it's very oh. it's heady but it's it's a quiet mix as opposed to oh 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 it's it's more like this oh 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 little fuller than pure head voice and he's blending with oh 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 now he's not that straight there's vibrato happening as he holds things out but listen to the way it's phrased again I journey through the desert. It all starts very, very straight. And then vibratos. We 
we want to nail those almost like a keyboard at the beginning and then let it trail and let it vibrato. And the, the, uh, the lower line through the is largely straight. Blending those together, it's pretty cool. And it's worth noting here as well that they've tightened these up quite a bit with auto-tune so that you get that almost keyboard-like sound. And it sounds as though in places they've gone in and done a little bit of what I started to do up here and really tighten up the way that they enter together and trail off. Like I started a little, a little differently there, so we would we'd do that. Maybe not quite that obvious. Maybe. And those aren't very transparent edits. But the point is, is we're, we're artificially creating tightness and, and pitch tightness to contrast the loosey-goosey nature of the leads. And that's what makes these so compelling. Listening on. And come on down. Some of them sound like they have a bit of extra reverb on them and they're panned in slightly different ways, which is kind of neat sounding, the different parts. I'm talking about the background vocals primarily. Pleasantly caving in. I come on down. Neat whisper again there. And I realize you're mine. You can really hear that subtle whisper right there. Listen again. You're mine. You're mine. Indeed a fool am I. And I realize you're mine. Indeed a fool am I. I love that you can hear the variance here. This is a classic example of what I was talking about earlier, where the two doubles, they're, they're on where they need to be on for the line, but then they're loose where they need to be loose. The vibrato and everything's totally off at the end, and then you've got that subtly in the background. Heaven smiles above me. What a gift here below. But no one knows. What's interesting here, I, the background vocals listen. Below. But no. Listen to that noise. This. This gives me an idea that maybe he was pretty far away from the mic to get the proximity effect on those. Right? Instead of right up on the mic. That's cool. A much different sound. Is that happening at the beginning? Those sound closer. With no 
then they sound like they get farther and farther from the mic as they go on, which is super awesome. And then right here, Heaven smiles above me. you've got that neat distorted sound. It sounds like he's singing through uh, either saturation or maybe maybe even a guitar pedal or something. What a gift. And then it opens up. Be but no one knows. No one knows. The gift that you give to me. No one knows. Super fun to discover the subtleties and experiment with our own voices. And you know what? If you're wrong about certain things, but you were inspired by it, for example, as I heard the end of this and, and heard that proximity effect, I questioned my judgment in terms of whether they did use auto-tune on those gang uh, background vocals or not. It certainly sounded like it at the beginning to my ears, uh, but it doesn't really matter if he did or didn't. What matters is what I do with it. Both approaches are, qu- are kind of cool to experiment with in my own stuff. And, and to put my voice through the paces too. Can I sing accurately, accurately enough with the auto-tune and really make it tight and like that? Can I also back off the mic and make it more gangy and, and loosey like I hear it at the end? It doesn't really matter if I make mistakes as I'm observing things. As a matter of fact, making those mistakes in, in judgment or in observation can be freeing for your creativity because, well, I thought that's what they were doing, but that's not really what they were doing, but I'm going to do that anyway over here. Really, really neat stuff. And the, the whisper integrations and the way he's tight when he needs to be tight and the way he's loose when he needs to be loose, really, really neat stuff. Also, don't forget about compression and larynx, height of larynx tone control when you're dialing in a sound like this. Again, if you'd like more help with your voice, you want me to speak into your singing, into your approach, the best place to start is to click that link below and join my free course. Again, subscribe to the channel. We'll see you for more.